Oh, it's an exciting time. World Series, election. Donald Trump. Donald Trump. Celebrity scandals galore. The Menendez trial, which is so big right now, because these boys are gonna, I think, get out. Their second trial was a couple weeks after the verdict of the OJ trial. Back to back. It's like a cycle of 24 hours of crime in LA, crime after crime after crime. Yeah. You know, crime does pain. How much do you think data, information, stuff that could just completely destroy some careers he has? Sanity is gonna prevail. There will be a tipping point. People are gonna figure out and not just accept the fact that the media is corrupt. They're yeah. idiotic. They're stupid. They're brainwashed. They think we're stupid. Hey, welcome, everybody. I'm Tom Zenner of Tom Zenner Scandal, co-host of One Degree of Scandals with the one and only Cato Kalen. Snails, good to see you, Tom. Good to see you, Cato. Okay, so we're going to get into all that, yeah. right? Uh, man, we got so much to talk about today. But I do find it kind of crazy and ironic. You were one of the most famous people in the world after the trial. Still are. Yeah. <laughs> one of the most lovable right now, by the way. Um, and then the Menendez trial, which is so big right now, because these boys are going to I think get out. We're going to discuss that in just yeah. a, in just a minute. But that trial happened and was televised on court. Their second trial was a couple weeks after the verdict of the OJ trial. It's yeah. crazy. It's just like, back to back. It's like a twenty four cycle of twenty four hours at crime. In L.A. crime after crime after crime. Yeah, you know, crime does pay, and it's, uh, it was televised. So. Uh, it kind of blew me away, yeah. and it didn't really take any deflection away because the trial of OJ was yeah. so from '95. Yeah. It took it, it took about two years yeah. for me to even go out. I mean, one year for sure, where I kind of mm -hmm. hit stayed low, and I was doing a radio show. You know, when Howard Stern was on the show uh, before me, so uh, definitely I was in the public eye mm -hmm. for that time, and it was just this is so opinionated. People would either hate or love you, and that went on for quite a while. You know, the media now, I think everybody's on to them, right? It, it, it was like yeah. the elephant in the room for a long time. I remember four years ago going on the PBD podcast, Patrick Bet David's podcast. Yeah. I was on 36 of his first 100 episodes. So as that thing was building, I remember when we were first doing it, they, we were happy there's like 100 people watching the live stream. Now he just had Donald Trump, President Trump on his yeah. podcast, and it's one of the biggest in the world. But I kept saying back then in 2020, I kept saying, Sanity is going to prevail. There will be a tipping point. People are going to figure out and, and not just accept the fact that the media is corrupt. They're yeah. idiotic. They're stupid. They're brainwashed. They think we're stupid. They think we're stupid. And, and literally, they've convinced themselves that they know more than you and they know better than you. Right. But we're all on to it now. Don't, don't you feel that? All this happened because of one thing. And it would still be going on with corruption. Elon bought Twitter. He made it X. It all happened because of that. None of the stories that are coming out would even be stories because that would have been, you know, censored off of when uh, the, the mm -hmm. other guy had it. So uh, it's all, I, I think it all credit goes to Elon Musk for making it more sane, making it real and, and showing the truth. Yeah. And he doesn't shy away from uh, everything on there now. It's not like it was before where it was clearly tilted left and they would oh. avoid anything conservative or any stories like that. I agree with you. That purchase was a, a pivotal moment, I think, it, in, in society. And maybe depending on what happens in the election, you know, it could be more important than we know. And maybe that's why people on the left are freaking well, out so much because he has access to all the Twitter files. You right. Know, you know, Tom, I uh, once again, we're, we're not like a really a political show, but I think it's more about what's what's right and what's wrong. If you think about the election in 2020, the Hunter laptop store, everybody knows it was true. And it was blocked completely from the New York Post. It was blocked from uh, Twitter uh, back then. And now um, uh, Hen Catherine Hestridge, uh, the old CBS reporter, has a, a story that's out there right now with the two FBI whistleblowers of saying it. they knew from the first hour it was real. The laptop was real. And that was hidden. That would have changed the election completely back then. Yeah. So, I mean... Uh, now that these stories are coming out, you would never would have heard none of these mm -hmm. things without Elon yeah. Musk. How much do you think data, information, stuff that could just completely destroy some careers he has? Like you wonder before the, the old regime got out, and I remember their CEO was just so completely incompetent. It wasn't even funny. I, I already forgot the guy's name. Yeah. Jo John, right? Uh, well, no, you're, you're, you're thinking of not the founder, but I'm talking about the, the sitting CEO uh, when when Elon took over, who he basically cut all oh, his. Oh, it was a woman, right? No, it, it was a yeah. guy, but he was he had been there for a few months. It wasn't Jack Dorsey. Well, he, you know, Jack Dorsey was yeah, thinking. No, Jack Dorsey well, he founded it. He was the CEO, but then there was a, a different CEO when, when Elon took over. I wonder if, if they 
what they dumped, what they burned, what they threw away, what they hid, because man, all those conversations and all that information is there. Yeah. And, and I think Elon is just sitting back thinking, Oh, wait I, until you see what, what's well, going to be exposed Twitter here. files. Mm, exactly. Came out with the yeah. Twitter files yeah. Yeah. back then where they start showing. Yeah, but there's Matt more, Taib. there's oh, no. way more. I'm saying that was kind yeah. of a start. It's sort of a hint of what's going on. And I also think it was, uh, uh, uh Zuckerberg in cahoots with everybody too. So I think the government's got so much pull yeah. with these social media companies back then. And now I believe that Musk doesn't need to go in with the, you know, make a deal with uh, DOJ because he's his own man. He he just wants the truth to go out everywhere. And I was just reading, can you believe this? Trump's truth social is worth more than Twitter. I just saw that, uh, a, a stat. I, I can't believe it. Hmm. Yeah, I haven't followed like the, the valuations of, of truth social I don't even, I'm not on it. I mean, yeah. I think people got on it because that was Trump's only social media outlet. Yeah, it, it's going to be absolutely crazy. So when I was talking about the Menendez trial, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, these cable networks are probably begging for the Diddy trial, right? Or oh, yeah. a retrial of the Menendez because they don't get ratings. Nobody watches cable news no. anymore. And they don't seem to know that. They still think they're important and relevant. Fox is the only network that had over a million total daily views 1.6 msnbc 903,000. that's it and those are all radicals that right. watch them right you know it's a echo chamber that's all it is uh espn at 811,000 per day <laughs> it, and cnn 532,000 in october per day isn't it amazing that we're, we're seeing kind of the destruction that it's all going down and you get someone like a rogan who uh you know uh, he did the uh, Bring up Trump, the interview in one day, 30 million, mm -hmm. view, 30 million views. A uh, second day, it got to like 43 million. And they're <laughs> CNN, uh, uh, MSNBC get nothing. And it's like the world really is on the phone. The mm, world is really yeah. uh, Twitter. The, the world is uh, all social media. Yeah. Well, think about kids right now. My, my I have Dash is 15. Yeah. Right. He, he, you think he even knows what a newscast is? Yeah. I mean, all their information is you know, it's it's on their what phone. Was the last time? Everything, what? every news story that they read or anything that they consume is on their phone. So I, I, this is a great point because I was watching a, a World Series the other day, and then some of the commercials they show the the Fox Morning Team of what they are. And I'm like, oh my God, I have not watched a local newscast in years. How do they survive? Who watches it? Mm -hmm. Who watches the the morning news shows? <laughs> is it still? I mean, do I, they must be getting money's advertisers, but. It's, it's, it's amazing. Point. I used to be addicted to watching morning shows. Exactly. And it, it's, I have not watched anything. The fir I, first thing I do is put on Twitter. Yeah. I put Twitter on. Kato, Twitter. I used to be on those shows. Yeah. I mean, I was in I, news for 15 years. Yeah, it's you amazing, know? right? The morning and, shows. And, and back in the 90s, it was a big deal. I mean, that's how people got their news in the local market. Like, I worked at Chicago, Boston, big markets. People know who you are. I mean, especially in sports. So let me ask you, you were in the, the prime of it all. You were when it was just everybody would watch you on TV. So you tell me what it was like being paid back then and what the mm -hmm. decline is. It's sort of like, I think, radio, because I was a radio and it was a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Radio, I don't even think it exists, no. what you could make. So tell me what that is. What do you think okay. a morning person gets? Or just a, a sure. newscast? Let's take a major anchor in New York or L.A. Like a, a major anchor. Do L.A. Anchor, okay, do L.A. So a few years ago, Paul Majors, you know, who came from Minneapolis, was the big stud anchor at, at CBS. Probably making four, four to six million a year. Okay, um... All the frontline anchors at NBC, ABC here locally in LA now, probably in the in the you know early two thousands, late nineties, their salary yeah. would be three to five million for sure. Right. Okay, and then the backup, you know, then you have a couple other people, the uh, the weather guy, the main weather guy's making a million, right? Fred Rogan was making well over a million for being there forever doing sports. Yeah. Half, chop it in half, and then probably a little bit less. Okay, I don't see any big frontline anchors making more than a million. One million, Pro if a million, if. because you just don't have the advertising anymore. You just don't. You can't justify it, which which makes me think, OK, I I sense a shift even and you do, too. Everybody does. Right. This is a big story how they're finally getting after Kamala. Right. CNN is actually challenging her after that town hall. Maybe not so much MSNBC, but look, you can't be blind to it forever. But they, they're going to lose so much money if she's president. They are. They make their money when Trump is president, when right. they can rail on him and make up these fake conspiracies. I think there's a, another shift that we're seeing is no endorsements from LA Times, Washington Post, USA Today, because I think they, my opinion is I, they feel like they want to, they see Trump maybe as they've got to get in bed with him now because he could 
maybe shut down people, shut down things, and he could really have a lot of power. USA well, that, Today, yeah. not endorsing, yeah. LA Times not endorsing, and people mm -hmm. are leaving. And I thought the big story was that uh, when the LA Times, uh, they had people quitting, and then Jennifer Rubin, who was on the, in the Washington Post, said, kudos to you for quitting your job. That's it. Show, stand up to the big man. And then the Washington Post did the same thing. We haven't heard a word from yeah. her. Did she quit? You know, it's yeah. it's sort yeah. of like, you know, put your money where your mouth is. Yeah. And uh, these these things that you could never even imagine yeah. happened. Yeah. But again, it also speaks to the fact that who gives a shit? Yeah. Who gives a shit what a newspaper thinks? Who, who right. cares who their editorial board supports? <laughs> really? I yeah. mean, the fact that you would endorse someone would make me and other normal people not want to that's, vote for that person. Bezo, I mean, no one cares. Bezos said that. Yeah, you and have no credibility. Yeah. Well, he's smart, too, because he also owns Amazon. Arnold Schwarzenegger endorsed Kamala Harris for whatever that's worth. A former Republican governor of California. <laughs> I mean, he lives here. He knows he, what's happening in California. Yeah, I'm sorry. Idiot on that one. I mean, right. Kamala Harris makes... Gavin Newsom looked like Ronald Reagan. Yeah. He's a John Podesta endorsing her, and he's all for climate. I, I don't get it at all. Terminator is the dominator. You know, we were discussing the fact that, you know, the social media companies are going to be targeted by. I mean, they they act like the 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 federal government or the Democrats are their friends. They're not going to be. The Justice Department is not their friend. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So the, they're facing some issues. That's why. That's why Zuck backpedaled a little bit when he was in, in you know apologized remember he 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 gave that formal apology google's doing what they do and in in you know you mentioned the joe rogan podcast with trump it's over probably over 40 million by the time this is oh, being yeah. watched uh, and easily then how you can't find it how you can search on youtube and it doesn't show up right i hate that that they take sides i hate that they cannot express uh, the great thing about musk is he'll let anybody go on his platform yeah. Anybody, you have your, if you do something wrong and all, he has community notes mm -hmm. and he's, he's all about doing the right thing. I don't, I don't know why they block Trump or anybody that has something to say, uh, a lot with the vaccines, anything. They have nothing to say and they block it all. And it makes no sense. I mean, don't you want the truth? You're, mm -hmm. You live in America. You want to know what's really going on. Yeah. And they never, ever do it. And so then you, you get a bad taste in your mouth. At least I do. I'm going, mm -hmm. I, I start hating these people. You know, I think I showed you some of the things that are going on with as far as uh, voting and uh, machines already breaking down Dominion. It's I feel like they're planting a seed. And when I say them, I, I'm, I am saying Democrats. I'm, I'm sorry. I see it. I watch. I follow. And I see that they're planting it, that the um, Jocelyn Benson from Michigan saying the Dominion machines are having a problem. This isn't just in Michigan, she said. It's 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 nationwide. How, how would she first of all know she's in Michigan saying it, it's planting a seed? Pennsylvania with the, the voter registration, they're showing it. I, it speaking of Twitter, uh, X, the great thing about this is as soon as they're on camera with this, it be, you're on the Internet. And so someone always does, does due <clears throat> diligence. They find out the woman's face. She's a, she's a Democrat plant. And you find out who she is. And they always say make her famous because – She's first of all, the woman's lying. Mm -hmm. Then uh, she's, and then they showed a, a cop make him famous. He closed the uh, one thirty. He was closing the doors when it's supposed to be open until five. So already they're having the the lawyers and Trump's team going in there and find out what's what's happening in Pennsylvania. I I can't believe this. The funniest thing is Tom too. I guess there was eighty thousand votes from the Amish all for Trump, which I believe. <laughs> I, I do. He owns that that yeah, community. I'm, right? I'm He's well, they, big they in never Pennsylvania. They had did, did interviews. Right. They don't do TV. They, they don't like right. to be on TV. But they said big Trump supporters. Trump supporters. <laughs> well, you know, I actually what find do you do that after four in the morning? You're done churning the butter. <laughs> you go and did vote. you raise the barn? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you got to do that. Uh, yeah, that's Ishmael. classic. Uh, yeah. All right. So it's gonna be uh, <laughs> you know the, you, something that could be so easy is walk in, show your ID. Cast your vote, get your little sticker, walk out the door. Has now become so complex, right? It's it, just just so impossible to right. to count these votes. So you know, um, so let me ask you a question. I'm putting you on the spot. Do you think some of the endorsements that Kamala Harris is getting? Uh, I'll give an example. Usher was on the View, and he said, "I don't make an opinion. I don't want to be. I'm not going to say who to vote for." And uh, it's it's up to you. That's your right to know who you're going to vote for, Trump or Kamala Harris. It's up to you. Then about two weeks later, he's endorsing her at a, at a uh, some sort of rally. He didn't sing, but he endorsed her at a rally. Do you think there's pressure on people that possibly are part of P. Diddy parties? I do you think that something's going on with celebrities that do endorsements? 
your well, opinion. Okay. I guess the question would be, what's in it for them if they endorse that candidate? I mean, what's going to make that go away? Because the Justice Department is all over that. And uh, unless they can give them some sort of protection, I don't know that they can. But I will say this. There's no way they're doing it just for the hell of it or out of the goodness of their heart. Or they, you know, I don't know why an entertainer would endorse anybody because you're already alienating half your audience. Why right. do that? Just do just lay low. No one cares anyway. You know, yeah. but so, yes, I think there's ulterior motives for Usher to do that. A hundred percent. Not sure. It wouldn't surprise me if it had something Not to do with him, Diddy. by the way. Yeah. No, or, or yeah. others, you know, but I would kind of have to follow the trail and see how that would actually yeah. help them. But anything's possible. Right. Because, you know, there's a lot of people very, very scared right now. You know, it's Tony Busby. He's one of the most important people in America right now. He is the guy in Houston, you know, that's leading all those uh, the lawsuits. Right. Against Diddy. Right. Because everybody feels free to come out of the woodwork now with him in prison. Right. Right. And, and he's obviously going to be convicted, you would think. Um, and and but the, the details of these lawsuits are just so, so insane and, and so disturbing. And God, it just makes you just root for the day where he just rots in hell. You know what I mean? Yeah, Diddy, I, he just needs to go away. But this guy does not play around. Remember, he's the one that did all the suits for the Deshaun Watson victims, right? For the masseuses in Houston for right. the quarterback. I mean, another scumbag, right? Just a horrible story there. He did when uh, when uh, Astro World. Remember that? The, yeah, the concert, Brown, Travis, right? no, it, the Travis, no, it was Travis, Travis, Scott, Scott, Travis Scott, right? And what, four or five people died? He was the one representing the victims. He was involved in, in a Chris Brown incident as well. So that guy, and, and, and the way he warns that there's going to be more names, and now you can see these lawsuits. It's athlete A, celebrity B, you know, pre, pretty soon because there's loose lips in courthouses. You know, people are going to see these that aren't doctored, and they're not going to be able to. We're going to find out who these people are pretty soon, I think. Do you think it's a, you think um, Trump releases that list and Epstein list? Um, I don't know if he has the authority to or or whatever, but uh, I, I just think it'll naturally kind of eventually leak out. It has to. I mean, yeah. there's no way some of these details won't come out if it's as kind of horrific as everybody thinks it is. Right. All right. Uh, Menendez Brothers. Okay, let me get back to that. So, I mean, clearly big developments there. These guys, life in prison with no possibility of parole. Then the Netflix series comes out. Peacock does a docu-series. Kim Kardashian's visiting him in prison. And then the letter comes out, right, that was locked in storage from a family member, a cousin, you know, where Eric was telling him about the abuse. And then the former Menudo band member, right, who said that Jose Menendez also abused him. So these stories are kind of tied. We're talking about abuse, right? right? Abuse of minors, sexual abuse, male. On ma I mean, just creepy stuff. So, I mean, it's getting close now. I mean, Gascon has already said these guys need to be resentenced. What do you think? Uh, well, I think Gascon knows there's an election year and he's trying to get the publicity. That's the only reason Gascon's getting involved. No other reason. These guys, I think they're both guilty. Um, do you think I, they should? Do you think they've served enough? Do you think 35 years is enough for what they did? Do you expect them to be released? No, they won't be released. I think that this shows you the power of Netflix, the documentary. I think it's all because of that, not because of the Peacock one, although it's all media driven. I think people you, you, people have to realize that um, there's so much embellishment. Now, when the OJ won the uh, American Crime Story, won eight Emmys, I watched it. I wrote for the New York Daily right. News every episode, and I even said, this didn't happen. This didn't happen. Yeah. So I can only imagine things that didn't happen in this one also. And I, I think I if you look at if you look at the crimes itself of them killing their parents, it's unfathomable. I, I don't think no matter no matter what, I don't know if the if the sexual abuse is true or not. I just think it's become such a big thing from the Netflix series and everything coming out and celebrity Kardashian visiting or uh, these things are coming out that people are making, are expressing their feelings. They're, they're feeling the parents are dead for 30. No one really thinks about them at all. Yeah. They're, they're two people living Lyle yeah. and Eric and their feelings are towards them. It's like those poor kids. Well, I mean, they are, they're certainly getting sympathy because the story oh, has been sympathy. renewed. Okay. But it's not like the Netflix show exposed for the first time, alleged sexual abuse of the kids. I mean, that's was in the first trial. That's why it was a hung jury. The second trial, they wouldn't allow that evidence in, and that's why they were convicted. I believe they were probably abused. That's that's my take mm -hmm. on it, because I don't know how you can go to that level of violence against your parents unless there is something... I mean, you, for, for the money? I mean, you... 
How well, can you do that for the money? Well, it, how do you how do you go for them? How do you not after you murder Alston buy a Porsche and buy Rolexes and buy all these things? Do you there's there's absolutely no sympathy towards the parents. Uh, first of all, who would kill and then immediately start buying things? I mean, doesn't yeah. that tell you something right there? Well, they did kill him. There's no question about it. They yeah. did do that. And I think you better brace yourself for the fact that they are going to be released. I believe that they're out. I, I believe they will get out. Wow. I, I, I don't see a, a path where they don't. So what do they do if they get out? They still live in L.A., you think? Hell yeah. I think that's the, the that's the interesting like debate because can the court put limitations on them as far as monetizing their story? They may try. But really, I mean, you can find loopholes and, and ways around that. Your prediction, how much money do these guys make if they come out of prison and they can start doing what they want, right? Book deals, speaking engagements, documentaries, movies. These guys, it's tens of millions. These guys are going to make so much money. If they get out. I think they're getting out. I think they will get out. I mean, I'm, I'm convinced they're going to get so out. So you, you think there'll be a tr there's going to be another trial, you're saying? I don't it's think so. No, I think what they're going to do is resentence them and, and on, a, on, a, on a manslaughter charge. And then for time, time served, served, right? 35 years. I, I don't think there's going to be another trial. I, I my opinion, I, I think they're getting out. Well, I, I think I think the Netflix gave people so much, gave them sympathy. I think when they come out, I think people possibly will embrace them. I think they can immediately get a book deal. Um, I don't think they're going to be uh, commentators on CNN for trials. I think that'd be a bad move. I think they could be. I'm not I, ruling anything out. I, yeah, I, I think I it's a possibility because why wouldn't CNN do something like that? People would actually watch, you know, I don't know. You got to kind of look at what they were in prison to by all accounts and reports. Pretty good, pretty good, you know, prisoners, not monsters per se. Now, what they did was horrible. Right. God, you just, you know, I, I, I did spend a lot of time thinking about this and, and, and you know, have spoken on some other shows about it uh, to, to go and buy a shotgun and blow your parents away like that, knowing you know, the the ramifications and, and the crime scene and how horrific that would be. Right. Completely. But I mean, it, but if you if you uh, if you believe that they were abused since a young age, I could see the motivation. But I also can't see why. Why not just beat the living hell out of the dad? You know, yeah, what I mean, take I, a couple of baseball bats to him. You know, I, I think the father, um, he was uh, I, th I think the Latin culture and I'm not Latin, but I am Catholic and I think it's very driven Catholic. I don't see him. I don't see this sexual abuse. I could be wrong. I don't. He's an outlier. All, you know. Yeah. He, he, who who know? I mean, who knows? I'm sure he was strict. Yeah. But if anything, he was. Uh, I, I, he said he had affairs. I mean, they they proved that he had many affairs. Mm -hmm. Even the wife knew that. Uh, the only good thing about the Netflix series is Javier Bardem was so good in No Country for Old Men that I back in that time I wanted him to be killed in that movie, and he got killed here in that one. <laughs> so it was sort okay. of like. Am I right though? Did you not see Go Country for Old Men? I kept going. God, I hope, uh, I hope uh, uh, Antoine Chagall gets killed. Meets his maker. Huh? Meets his maker. He, got, he only got a broken arm that with the end of the movie of No Country for Old Men. But in this one, it was. I, I kept seeing him as as Antoine Chagall yeah, yeah. Um, in, in the Menendez. Well, hey, movie. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Cato. If if you if you have internet access in the San Diego prison that you're in, Lyle and Eric, you're welcome right here. Come, come join us on the podcast. We'll interview you. We'll give you a fair shot when you get out of prison. You down? Get the Menendez brothers here? Completely. I mean, for sure. Yeah, I, I I'm, I'm going to go for yeah, it. Yeah, of course. I'm going to go for it. Uh, what do you think? There, there's some talk now, and it does make sense. Like, you can really feel a shift just this past year, maybe even the past few months. You know, like I kind of mentioned at the beginning of the show, everybody knows the media's BS. You know, you just they're just like it's not only that they're not accurate and don't care. It's like they're evil. Right. They have an agenda and they're just crazy. Um, but you you see you you see supporters for Trump feeling a lot more comfortable now, don't you? I, I, I'll tell you another change that happened. It's over. I think people can now finally support. It. I was shopping at the uh, local store. I go to get groceries. I saw two people wearing Trump hats. Never here in I, LA. Here in LA, I've never seen that. Mm -hmm. I think the big thing was Nick Bosa putting that thing where he snuck on camera. He put on the make so America great again. Mm -hmm. Have you? I mean, my reaction. I couldn't. I watched it live. I'm going, no way that just happened. Mm -hmm. And the the most important part about that was the three other guys, Kittle, uh, Purdy, and I, I don't know who the other guy was. They were all smiling, kind of laughing, like, yeah. oh, we get it. Yeah. And it, it seemed like that was an endorsement. I, for, I just, that's the of course impression it was. I got. It was like, yeah. uh, but their laughter, I mean, was the endorsement. Mm. Bosa, obviously, we know it's like he's 
mega all the way. Mm. But do you know that his uniform is sold out now on really? the NFL stores? Huh. It's a number one, number one jersey. So what does that tell you? Yeah. I mean, that, it means that there's a silent number of large people out there, right? I, that, it's sold out. Uh, the jersey yeah. is sold out, Tom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> He's popular. I, yeah. I, it's amazing, yeah. right? Yeah. That's so, crazy. I love how we also had a white hat with gold lettering, right? It wasn't red, so maybe right. it could stay in the because some NBC intern probably would have tackled him. No, you can't have that hat anywhere near here. And right. they even tried to good luck tackling him. Right, right, right. right. Yeah, good luck, man. One yeah. stiff arm. That maybe kid's, maybe he's thirty in the turf. Yeah, yeah. But and then MS, or <laughs> NBC tried to hide it. And well, then, they, right? they that what? NBC actually got rid of it and had so many complaints that they put the actual footage on. Yeah. So. They, because people said that, that people get pissed off when a network or anything does mm. things that it's a, a blatant lie. Yeah. No, this happened. Mm -hmm. It's like that. Uh, what's that guy's name? Uh, oh, Biden. And, you know, he, <laughs> I, you, he called people. Gar Trump supporters. Garbage. Million Trump supporters. Garbage. And now the White House is covering up and saying, no, there's an apostrophe here. It wasn't this. They're going all these cover-ups and they're saying, so everybody's saying, no, watch the tape. Mm. It's blatant. It's like, why? Why don't you just admit it? It's like, okay. Here, I got he another theory up. for that. Yeah. I don't know if he knows. He's, why is he, first of all, doing a Zoom during yeah. a presentation, uh, which is 200 feet away from where he lives? I, I just, I, how have so many <laughs> people, said, especially celebrities and elite Right, you leave yeah. it. How have they generated so much hate for one person? Like, where does it come from? How, uh, it's just like that's their whole thing. They hate Trump. I, I have Tom. That's the that's the. I have no idea. How could Trump go on a show like The View when Barbara Walters on, Whoopi Goldberg, Joy Behar were all on, going, "We love you, we love you." But when they saw that he was, he, he went on the show when he was running for president. But when they saw he was getting closer and closer, someone just said, "Time to hate him." I. I don't get it. And I mean, hate. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, there's certain things I see. That I can't believe certain people that uh, sh I, I think they portray weakness when I see uh, uh, like I always like Ben Stiller. Not so much. He's, you know, with his endorsements and seems so weak. He's teaming up with Doug Emhoff. When I see Billy Eichner and Will Ferrell going out in the streets of New York with their vote Kamala shirts and they're doing these jokes, I, I just feel like it's really kind of a weak, weak campaign of what they're doing. And it's everything is anti-Trump. At least do something. What has she done? Show us something she's done. She's had so much to, sh to talk about. And she does anything. She just talks about Trump. It's unfortunate that she won't go on Rogan. So we can see her squirm for three hours with no earpiece, no teleprompter. He, she would like, I think Trump was right. He said she would be comatose. I, she would Call not know. She, she would, she'd have to tap out. She'd say there's a national emergency. I got to run something like well, that. I mean, you know, I, first of all, why do you make it that you want to have it where she lives? Why not do what everybody else does and go and do the three hours with Joe Rogan mm. and that? I think he held his ground. And I think, um, plus uh, Trump and JD Vance doing it and there, there's no script. He's yeah. it's raw. Whatever he asks, you got to cover yourself. It's mm -hmm. not you. Uh, you improv. Mm -hmm. There was something interesting that Rogan, he was, you know, talking about the, the interview and what really caught him. He says that for that whole three hours, Trump never w once used the restroom. Right. And he never drank anything. He didn't have a sip of water the whole time. And then he left and went right on the plane and headed to a, a rally in yeah. Michigan. So he is kind of a machine. And the fact that. He's on his 50, uh, whatever day. It's uh, yeah. It's unheard of with no rest. Yeah. And I think the fact that he's never drank alcohol, doesn't do any drugs, he's lived a really clean life when yeah. it comes to that. And then just this uh, kind of unnatural energy that he has. Yeah, he was good. He was on... Uh, he was on PBD, Patrick but David's podcast. I don't yeah. know if you caught that, but it was really interesting. It was funny because my first observation, uh, you know, Pat's got that great studio. It's a former bank vault. It's really cool, right? And, uh, and everybody signs their name. Yeah, they sign the their name on the, on the locker, on the door. It, it, Trump looked like his chair was too low to me. It almost felt yeah. like Pat yeah, was Pat, like had the power position over yes. him. Like his chair seemed low and he seemed slunched that, back a little bit. He was Pat was the, the apprentice on that one. <laughs> he was telling him you're yeah. fine. But no, yeah. he took control. Uh, here's the difference. I think what's happening now, too. And uh, you can agree or disagree. I think Trump is making the right moves with doing stuff with Theo Vaughn, Joe Rogan, uh, Andrew Schultz. I think I know who's giving him direction. Baron. Yeah, he is. Baron 100%. is 100 percent. Baron mm -hmm. is Baron is in he's in the zeitgeist of what dad do do this one. He's uh this will move the needle. He's mm -hmm. right. He goes, This is the person that's kind of uh mm -hmm. help you out. Here's the with the young vote. And I think I think Baron is um 
obviously a pretty smart guy. You're 100 percent right. Nine, Be- and he's his dad is just. I'm sure his dad goes, Baron. What do you think? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he's getting advice about this. And I think with Melania, I think she's definitely she she's. I I think women would love this. Her. I mean, some probably are jealous because let's face it, she's the she's a supermodel and she's the wife of Donald Trump, and, right? So the, it, automatically you're gonna hate her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, I, but, I I hear so many positive stories about Baron. Because, oh, he, you know, Mar-a-Lago is real close to the Valley Tama headquarters. So, I, you know, there's a lot of interaction there. But what a sharp, sharp, smart kid, um, tough. You know, no, you know, he's able to handle, you know, all all, well, the, all the blowback from being in that his, family. Because of his day. He's, yeah. He got it. He's, he's mm-hmm. you know, he's Teflon. Everything kind of slides off the, yeah. of this off this guy. And, and the other thing about Baron is he's at one rally and all he did was wave, stand up and wave. He's so under the radar, silent, that when it's time for him to make that big splash, it's going to make the biggest difference. And, um, you know, it's so evident to me that Trump and his team, do you want the guy that's going to be flying to Mars on your team or not? Do you want the guy who's going to, who's the most genius person mm-hmm. in technology on the team? Mm-hmm. Do you want uh, an RFK who's really into health, who's really into what, what vaccines are good or bad, mm-hmm. that's on the team, a Democrat? Do you want someone like a yeah. Telsey Gilbert? I mean, if you think about this, it's uh, they're called on social media the Avengers, and I really think it's a team of Avengers. And uh, obviously, I mean, people are going, "Geez, Cato's a real Trumper." I don't, I don't know. I think I'm, I'm really for the best for the country, and it's it's pretty obvious that um, yeah, there's no argument to be made. I mean, what's what, best for this country is what he's throwing out yeah, there. Yeah, he's you know, putting the, Democrats. The scary he's thing got is, two lead Democrats that yeah, are part of yeah. his team And Kamala now. Harris doesn't talk anything about what she's going to do. And we've already right. seen what's kind of happened the last four years. And it's and it's all because of certain things that are coming out. Uh, like you said, there's just maybe a month ago it was different. But I think people are starting to see more and more of, uh, like you said, hate. And you don't, you yeah. don't get rid, you don't hate on someone, call them garbage and all that. And it's all reflection on that party. Because... Uh, Obviously, America is uh, everybody, and I think that's why Trump is, uh, yeah. and he's helping out all the people on the House and Senate by yeah. going to certain places, yeah. uh, like a thing that would never exist. New Jersey is right now Republicans in the lead in New Jersey. That hasn't happened since Reagan. Yeah. Uh, it, it was, I, I always thought Elon Musk, I thought a good role for him could be the the uh, conservative uh, Soros. A, oh, Elon yeah. Musk, a conservative Soros, and just pump money into campaigns at a local level, maybe in the House, judges, yeah. district attorneys, right? Because it clearly worked for George Soros, right? He got his guys in here, and right. cities are upside down because of it, right? The big election here for district attorney in L.A. that, man, it could change the city immediately. Crimes might actually get prosecuted. People might get arrested, held accountable. No more smash and grabs. I mean, it's it's scary. You can't wear a Rolex going to Beverly Hills. You'll be tracked and followed. Oh, yeah. And, I, you know? I you, never, you'd be a fool to do it. I'll tell you that. I watched that news time. I never thought I would see it in my life. Twice I was at a CVS. Twice I saw shoplifters. I've never saw it before in my life. And I saw them just carrying bucket loads of stuff. Uh, like you can do like $950 worth of stuff. Yeah. And keep it under a thousand. I was going after the person. The manager said, no, don't. They don't even bother. Yeah. I, I, Were you? Yeah. Vigilante Cato to the I rescue. Was, I was just really pissed. Like, what are you doing? Are you right. insane to this, this, this woman? Uh, and they're so brazen, too. They don't care. They they're just, just load it up and walk out. They know they nothing can out. happen right. to them. Man, we had this huge smash and grab in Manhattan Beach at a jewelry store. Oh, I mean, it made, I made the, the rounds all over the world. And it was like at 5 o'clock in June, right? Busy Manhattan yeah. Beach. And somehow they were able to get out of town. And I, I think they were, eventually were caught. But, I mean, it's just, it's just creepy. It just makes you sick to think that people have the gall to do that. I got to tell you, I've been looking at... Uh, Places in Wisconsin offline, just like, because I was getting, get fed up. I like, I should probably just go there. I can get a place. I can get a pretty big house. And I'm like, I hate the crime. And then I realized <laughs> Milwaukee suburbs, that they might have crime too. <laughs> I'm going, wait a minute. I go, Kato, it seems like I, a lot of crime shows are based in Milwaukee. It seems like that 48 hour. Well, I'm not going to be in the actual city. I got to be, yeah. <laughs> I was just seeing one the other day. Milwaukee, Chicago. In Milwaukee. Got, just, Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and then Kato, I'd love to see you in February when the weather's horrible, <laughs> Packers or seasons oh, I'll be over. Flying. I'll be a snowbird here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the World Series, man, I, I love it. I love it. It might be over by the time you're watching this, but man, I think it's just been so great. I think, I think my my last. Have you been following it at all? Yeah. Okay, so you have Ice Cube coming out 
for game two for the Dodgers, right? Which was an epic performance. I mean, so good. He walks out of the bullpen and does his thing. And I mean, it's Ice Cube. And then they have Fat Joe for game three for the Yankees. I was so, I just felt embarrassed I, for New York in general for that. I couldn't believe it. I, I, go, I didn't even know who the guy was on the, on the mound. And with it, whatever he was saying, then the way he threw his microphone down, I'm going, oh. Yeah. But, but and, and by the way, I like New York. And uh, I, well, I like the Brewers, by the way, Milwaukee. So this both teams I kind of can't stand. But when I saw that, I was like, oh. And then I saw the, you saw the Mookie Betts. He goes into the stands to catch a foul ball. And there's a, on, on Twitter X, there's a shot, the video close up of the guy, one guy grabbing well, yeah. Mookie, Mookie's arm, hand, mm -hmm. and the other guy getting the glove to get the ball out. They got kicked out. But that was sort of like, yeah, it's New York. I mean, it was crazy. I mean, they were proud of it, right? One guy is prying open his glove and trying to take the ball out of his I, hand. The other guy's holding his hand back. What? All During right, so, the game, it's so like he, right. even the New York cheesecake has graffiti. Okay. Zeus, can I get a laugh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so those guys live in Connecticut. They're, they're season ticket holders. What do you think? What, what should be the punishment for that? I, I think you get a one-year ban. One -year I don't ban. know, man. You get, I, you get a lifetime well, at ban? At least a, a year ban. At least. Uh, you know, very, at least. least and then and if, if those were season tickets, I think you put them uh, well, upstairs. Well, you, let me ask you. Do you, do you think that Luki, uh, Mookie Betts could actually sue? No. Nothing? No, there's no lawsuit there. I mean, nothing happened. You know, he wasn't injured or anything, so there's no oh, lawsuit there. Know. But, I mean, could something bad happen? Sure. I mean, it's possible. I mean, I wonder if it could be an assault. Right? It's sort of an assault on his glove and him. Well, I mean, during the tribute to cancer, which I thought was really, really outstanding. Where, the, I mean, that was unbelievable. Everybody participated, the umpires, the players, everybody, the broadcasters holding up a card. You know, the fight against cancer was powerful, magical. And someone's F-bombing Freddie Freeman. Yeah. Freddie Freeman, it's you mom, suck. It was mom died of cancer, I believe. Well, I mean, ha or has during cancer? this moment of silence, you hear Freeman suck. You suck, Freddie Freeman. I mean, yeah. some Yankee yeah, fan was doing that. I'm looking up this rant. Did you hear about Greg Popovich? Uh, Popovich and Steph Curry. Uh, I, I'm from Milwaukee. I saw Doc Rivers do a thing at the, once again, the Kamala. Stay in sports. It made me sick. As a matter of fact, I, I hope he gets fired. Uh, I'm not a Doc Rivers fan. I think he's a horrible coach. He's lucky, you know. the The Bucks, you know, they had a their uh, uh, Bud Coach Bud yeah. was their best coach. Well, he's the coach of the Suns now. Yeah, and they just they make mistakes. Uh, take a look at this guy. I mean, I can't stand Popovich. Okay. I can't pay. Look, I've never liked I'm gonna, him. I'm going to express my views right here. Yeah. I can't stand Popovich, Steve Kerr, Steph Curry. I can't stand them all. They're doing. Don't be political. Triple the ball. Okay, I'll, I'll follow <laughs> Laura, that Laura up with, Ingram. I like Steve Kerr. I've known him for 30 years. Yeah. I, I, I like that. Steve Kerr. I don't agree with him politically on, on some things, but I do like Steve Kerr. He's a great guy. Now, Popovich, that's another story. Okay? You're a joke. You're an embarrassment. You really are. To the NBA, to your city, and you're stunting the growth of probably the greatest phenom the basketball world has ever seen. Wemby? I mean, yeah. you are the worst you're dividing your locker room. I mean, go be a political pundit if that's what you want to do. You you are like late late stage Belichick. You're delusional, right? You're so concerned about making everybody think it was about you. No, it wasn't. It was Tim Duncan. It was Robinson. It was it was Park. Manu Ginobili. Parker. It was Tony Parker. It wasn't you. You got a winning lottery ticket, you fraud. That's all you are, right? And then and now you want to be this armchair politician. Save it. We don't give a crap. We really don't. I okay? Work on developing your team, which sucks. You sucked last year, and you're gonna destroy this guy. What what if Wemby doesn't have the same? values and beliefs as greg popovich does he punish him then right i mean seriously because it's so personal to popovich coach the team you can make your opinions known but don't go on these rants and, and don't be so one-sided i mean i think intelligence means you can look at both sides of the issue and then make a smart decision not call P president trump a racist is there one ounce of proof that you have that he's a racist I mean, what if someone called him that? He'd go nuts, right. right? I mean, you're a bad basketball coach right now. You were lucky that you had multiple Hall of Famers, legendary players that won you championships. Now, Bill Belichick 
has come to his senses a little bit. And I like him. I like this new version of him right. on the media. I La really do. He's yeah, a likable guy. guy. He's got a great... Now, part of that is because he has a young girlfriend. I mean, that's going to make yeah. everybody's life better. That's going to put a yeah. bounce in his step. But, you know, my problem with him, too, at the end, was not just acknowledging the fact that he had a winning lottery ticket. He had Tom Brady. Why not just accept that? He should have retired when Brady went uh, to Tampa. Because Brady just proved to the world that he was the reason for the success. It right. was not Belichick. He's a great defensive coach, but he's an average or below average coach without Tom Brady. Yeah. And that is a fact, right? And people get stuck where they, where they don't want to believe that. But look at the numbers. It is true. I think it's a mistake if Belichick comes back to coach. I really do. Because he wants to chase that record of Don Shula, and he's very close. Now, he mm. would want that. Who wouldn't want that, right? Yeah, I, I don't know. I think he's enjoying life too much now with you know getting on McAfee show, doing these... Uh, broadcast being on with the Manning brothers I think he's starting to see that he's got a sense of humor and maybe that was not part of his life he had to be the Mr. Serious Mr. West Point so I think yeah he's enjoying this too much but what you said I agree with you 100% about if if a coach or player wants to get into politics okay then be an analyst it, yeah. do sports I think it, I really do I think it takes away and I look at things differently because I I can't enjoy it mm -hmm. because you know, do sports. I do like what Bosa did, though, because Bosa didn't say anything. He just came out and did the thing, and yeah. then, you know, a picture says a thousand words right there. Right, and he didn't say anything but, at the post-game press conference. He went out of his way not to, right? So right. he didn't even address it again. Popovich is unhinged. He's, oh, he's literally, he's unhinged. He's his lunatic, right? And it's so personal with him. I think Steve him. Kerr is, I know he's your buddy, but Steve Kerr also is the same way. And I think, I, I think they've gotten too involved. I can, you can have the, I, I know which way they lean, that's fine, but yeah, you know, stick with what you're, yeah. what you're good at. Yeah. Okay. So because it really pisses me off. <laughs> okay. So we're, we've made the predictions. A couple predictions here. You think the Menendez stay in prison? I say they walk. I think they'll stay in prison. Okay. I don't think they're. You, you seem to think they're going to get out like in a year. Oh yeah. Less than, sooner. Okay. I yeah. think. I think they'll be out very very soon. I think they'll be making a lot of money. Uh, here it is. Is Belichick going to coach again? Do, oh, yeah, do you think he'll be a head coach again? Uh, well, I just kind of. I think that he's enjoying his life too much. He's yeah. not going to. Yeah. And, and, I, and, and look at. He wasn't offered anything. When he was, you know, no, no one offered him. No. So what's he going to start groveling? Yeah. Well, he's no, been, no team's going to give him full control, right? They're not going to give him the GM role because yeah. he proved at the end he wasn't good at that either. Right. And uh, ideally he'd be a defensive coordinator. And, and he'd does, probably make a difference want, there. Does he want to get a job that's going to be like a coach of Carolina who'll probably get fired? Does he really want to go to a team that's bad? So. He I, wants to go to a team that's going to be good. So he's going to hold off on Giants or Dallas. Those would be yeah. the two jobs. I don't, I look, here's the deal. I think he's happy in his life. Like, for real, and it's because of the girlfriend. And if you're a head coach again, you ain't seeing anybody in your family. It's 16 hours a day, every day. So that's done. Actually, the Cowboys could be a choice. He, if McCarthy doesn't win, and well, who knows? The problem I, there is Jerry, Jerry Jones. Jones is the GM, right? So is 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 Bill Belichick going to just take orders from him, personnel wise? You're going to think that he'd want to have a say in that. That's why I think the Giants' job. You know, he hates the Jets. He's constantly blasting the Jets. And he loves the Giants. Won two right. Super Bowls with him. So. And lost two. Boy. Right? Okay. With Eli. I asked you another question for you. Is uh, we talked about the uh, P. Diddy, and that's going to be in the news for a long time. Of just because trials, people are fascinated. They, they want to look at a trial on TV, which we don't know if it'll be on TV, but everybody wants to look at their life. It's like, well, geez, my life is better. It's sort of that Homer Simpson thing. People relate to Homer because they go, eh, at least Homer's got a lot worse than I have it. And that's the whole thing with Simpson. Do you think the celebrities, you think that, oh, well, it's a hard way to put this. Uh, do you think certain celebrities have something to do with the freak offs? Do you think that people are right now worried and that other people know, like they're part of possibly being in those freak off yes. parties? Do you think it's, do you think there's a list in these videos that they're really shaking their pants right now? Yes, I do. A, the attorney in Houston said that, right? You Plus should they, be, yeah. right? You, yeah, you should be real nervous right now. He literally said that. So he knows, he knows, and the celebrities know. Here's the other thing. What's going to happen, you think? You well, think movie, you think it's going to prison? Do you think that Hollywood shuts? I mean, obviously it's going to be only A-list people went to those parties. Well, okay. Well, here's one scenario. What if Diddy doesn't live long enough to go to trial? Then does the information come out? I mean, I think I think in a situation like this, anything's on the table as far as some weird thing happening, because this whole thing is wrapped in weirdness, right? Right. It's it's just it's very very bizarre, weird, creepy, evil, sick, a lot of right. that stuff, right? So as we saw, you know, in that prison, 
Epstein. I mean, things happen, right? You never know. And it would probably uh, be uh, uh, an advantage for a lot of people that thing never went to trial, I would say. Do right? You, you think that a, a guy like a Diddy or somebody has a confidant that they a confidant that they gave everything to already, knowing that their life, like, hey, I, I might be killed. Here's everything else. And probably, they, probably, because it wasn't a secret that the feds were coming after him. So, sure, there's some of that information out there. But the, the, the difference is this wasn't a four-month period where these freak-offs happened. This happened over the span of over 20 years. Right. So there's a lot out there. And, and 20 years ago, people were feeling pretty safe. Oh, this will never get out there. It's just a party, you know, oh, blah, blah, blah. Different society now. And then it, you just compound it with all these victims. And then when you find out what really happened and how bad it was. So I do believe, I 100% believe that a lot of celebrities are nervous. I do. Because I think there's a lot out there about them that could be exposed. And then you wonder, what does that mean? Right. right? What kind of trouble do they get in? Is there is there a, a civil aspect to this? Is there, is there any criminal? I don't, I don't know, but it sure isn't good for your image. I'll tell you that. Oh, yeah. So I, so I think this that story will be the biggest story in 2025 throughout the whole, if if there's something that's going to go right. on with Well, Diddy. the trial schedule start in March. March of 2025. Yeah. And then in June is the Idaho killings. Kohlberger. Yeah. So, yeah, there's some trials. I don't know about the federal tr rules as far as a federal jury and a federal trial televised, but that Kohlberger thing's probably going to be on, on television, too. So a lot of stuff in the true crime world and the yeah. pop culture scandal world. Boy, it's kind of fun talking about it, isn't I'm, it? I'm going to probably get some calls to, yeah. on Kohlberger case yeah. for a 